Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today for episode 7 of our Pokemon Heart Gold Random Car Challenge. After beating the champion last time out, we've shipped out to Vermilion City to start our Kanto Gym Badge Challenge. We're not going for the classic order though. Instead, we're going to be taking on the gym leaders in the order the Johto games seem to suggest. That means Lieutenant Surge is up first. The stereotypical chauvinistic soldier uses a team of 5 in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, so that's how many cards we need to draw. Against the Vermilion City Gym Leader, we're going to be using the team of Ghastly, Bellsprout, Abra, Dugong, and Weezing. Weirdly enough, we're starting our Kanto journey with half of our Hall of Fame team from the first random card challenge. Although that's a nice throwback, this team isn't the best. Three Poison-type Pokémon are at least made more manageable by the ability Levitate, but there are still issues here. Let's have a look at their movesets. Zathura the Ghastly is up first, and at level 51 he's got Shadow Ball, Confuse Ray, Hidden Power, and Sludge Bomb. I'm pretty sure that's a Dark-type Hidden Power, but don't take my word for it, I am very often wrong. Lysander the Bell Sprout's up next at level 47, the Trumpet Sprout has the moves Energy Ball, Toxic, Sleep Powder, and also Sludge Bomb. Lyric the Abra's up third, also at level 47, and her moveset is made up of Psychic, Energy Ball, Shockwave, and Shadow Ball. We've got a lot of shared moves on this team. Coconut the Dugong is fourth in line, and he's our third level 47 with the moves Ice Beam, Aqua Tail, Signal Beam, and Surf. Dark and Psychic could both be pretty dangerous, so Signal Beam is there just in case we need it. Finally, we've got Bronchi the Weezing, who's at level 53 with Sludge Bomb, Explosion, Thunderbolt, and Flamethrower. As long as Surge doesn't have any powerful legendaries, I think we'll be okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. We lead off with Ghastly, and Surge starts out with his Golem. Even though the Ghost can't be touched by Ground-type moves, it's still not the best matchup, so we recall Zathura and send in Dugong. After diving underwater to dodge Stone Edge, Coconut surfaces and sends a Surf, crashing into the quad-weak Megaton Pokémon, handing us the first win of the match. Lieutenant Surge sends in Cradley next, and my brain just wasn't working here. Dugong has Ice Beam, and yet I just continued instructing him to use Surf. Combining Confuse Ray and Ancient Power, the Rock and Grass type manages to take down Coconut. That wasn't in the game plan, and is definitely 100% my fault. We send Zathura back in, and thanks to Surge's use of a full restore, Cradley is too busy recovering to dodge or block any attacks. Ghastly fires three Shadow Balls at the Fossil Pokémon, and they all connect to give us the lead once again. Sandslash is up next for Surge, so he's kept the trend of Rock and Ground types going. We recall Zathura once again and send in Bellsprout. Although briefly imprisoned by Sand Tomb, Lysander only needs to break free for a second to get off an Energy Ball. That single shot is enough for a one-hit KO, and now we're in complete control. The Lightning Lieutenant goes out to Gardevoir next, and he's too quick for Lysander to stop. Psychic blows away Bellsprout, taking us down to three. We go back out to Zathura, who's able to deal serious damage with Shadow Ball, but it's not enough. Gardevoir strikes again with Psychic, and just like that, it's a two-on-two. Lyric the Abra comes in and manages to outspeed the Embrace Pokemon to give us another narrow lead in the battle. Last up for the Vermilion Gym Leader is Infernape, who is just dangerous enough to make this scary for us. We call Lyric back and send in our final team member, Weezing. Luckily, Infernape starts with a not very effective close combat that was aimed for Abra. Not knowing just how much Infernape's next attack will do, we go for Explosion, hoping it will be enough to take him down in one. Bronchi destroys everything in sight, including Surge's final Pokémon, handing us the win in our first Kanto Gym battle. Sabrina's up next, and as she's only got three, that's how many we need to draw for this one. Okay, I'm not really sure the team of Charmander, Kabuto, and Clefairy are going to be enough, but it won't hurt to try. As long as Sabrina doesn't have a powerful fighting type, we may have a chance. Statistically, we're going to be seriously outmatched, but let's see what moves we're going to be using. Up first, we've got Ariza the Charmander, who's at level 53 with Flamethrower, Smokescreen, Double Team, and Fire Blast. I feel like to get through this, we're going to need some cheap moves. Trilo the Kabuto is up next, also at 53 with the moves Waterfall, Dig, Double Team, and Rock Slide. Lastly, we have Clayfire the Clefairy, who's our ace at level 55, and she's got Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Psychic, and Shadow Ball. It's just an attacking moveset trying to cover a lot of bases. Okay, I am not confident, but let's give this a try. The Saffron City Gym Leader leads off with Rampardos, which makes our decision to start with Charmander a fantastically terrible one. We have to switch out immediately, and Kabuto's definitely our best option. 
Sabrina calls for Zen Headbutt, which hurts Trilo, but not too badly, because he's still able to summon a waterfall above Rampardos' headbutt. The cascading water leaves Sabrina's first Pokemon on the brink of unconsciousness, but he attacks again, essentially ending our chances. We bring in Clefairy, knowing that a full restore is coming next. Clayfire gets off one hit before Head Smash annihilates her in one. The recoil does at least give Charmander a chance. If Ariza is going to sweep Sabrina's team, we really need to up our evasion with Double Team. That works out initially when Rampardo slams into a holographic clone with Zen Headbutt, allowing Charmander to attack from behind with Flamethrower. That at least gets us past Sabrina's first Pokemon, and Mr. Mime is up next. That's kind of ridiculous because Sabrina's second level 53 would usually be a Mr. Mime. So, as she's above level 30, the randomizer had to generate a fully evolved Pokemon, which as of Gen 4, there's probably around 250 options. So that's pretty damn unlikely. Anyway, the Psychic type ultimately gets the better of Charmander, so let's try this again. The only change we made before this attempt was to switch Trilo to the front of our party. So this time around, we don't have to waste a turn switching into Kabuto and can start with Double Team. It would have been nice to pay off right away, but Rampardo strikes with Zen Headbutt. We go for another double team which is risky, but this time it works out. Rampardos misses the mark and we get a high roll on Waterfall. The super effective splash knocks out Rampardos in one and we're in with a chance here. Mr. Mime comes in and all of our hard work with double team comes to nothing. She catches the shellfish Pokemon with Psychic, casting him aside and tying things up. We send in Clefairy next who's really up against it. Unfortunately, Shadow Ball does a really inconvenient amount of damage. It does just enough that two hits leave Mr. Mime in red health, meaning Clayfire has to deal with Sabrina using two full restores. Somehow Clefairy still comes out on top, leaving the Saffron City Gym Leader with only one. That final Pokemon is... Alakazam? What?! Both of Sabrina's final two Pokemon randomized back around to what they originally were? The odds of that are astronomical. If each Pokemon over level 30 has around a 1 in 250 chance of staying the same, the chances of two in a row doing it are about 1 in 62,500. It's not only unlikely, but really unfortunate because Sabrina has a very strong team. An incredibly timely critical hit actually handed us the win here without even having to use Ariza though. This was like my 20th try at this battle though, so I will absolutely take what I can get. Heading further north to Cerulean City, we can take on the next gym leader, Misty. We're going to be using the quartet of Spiro, Cedra, Gyarados, and Drowsy against our third Kanto opponent. That's going to be a horrific team if Misty has a single electric type. So let's hope she avoided them and have a look at the team. Artist the Cedra is up first, and at level 49, he's got the moves Surf, Ice Beam, Hyper Beam, and Dragon Pulse. Volvare the Spearow is also level 49 with the moves Return, Drill Peck, U-Turn, and Steel Wing. Up third we've got Daedalus the Gyarados who's at level 52 and equipped with Return, Earthquake, Stone Edge, and Waterfall. Finally, also at 52 we have Zero the Drowsy who has the moves Psychic, Thunder Wave, Toxic, and Shadow Ball. As long as Misty has no electric types, I think we're going to be okay. Alright, let's do this. The Cerulean City Gym Leader starts off with Staraptor, and we send in Seedra first. That makes for the perfect start as Artis knocks the Flying type out of the air with Ice Beam. Misty returns the Fainted Bird to its Pokeball, and for some reason chooses Rhyperior next. Surf washes away Misty's second Pokemon before she even has a chance to set herself. This is starting to seem like a simple task when Misty sends in her Darkrai. Okay, that complicates things. The mythical Pokemon makes things difficult right away by spamming Double Team, but after a couple of misses, Cedra finally hits with Surf. That slows it down, but Hypnosis sets us back yet again. Darkrai's ability kicks in, draining some of Artis' HP, so we recall the water type in favour of Gyarados. We get lucky with the pitch black Pokemon missing Hypnosis, and a crashing waterfall takes down the dark side of the Lunar Duo. That leaves Misty with just one. Milo takes up last for the Cerulean Gym Leader, and we still have two Pokemon to show off, so we recall Daedalus and send in Zero. Misty calls for Milotic to set up Aqua Ring, so we go for Toxic, but after a track, Drowsy continues to be immobilized by Love. The Water type attacks over and over with Hydro Pump until Zero finally connects with Toxic, which leaves her on a timer. 
Once we get down to 2 HP, Zero gets off a Psychic and after avoiding Hydro Pump, we switch things up and send in Volvere. As soon as the bird comes in, Misty uses a full restore which cancels out the Toxic that was about to finish things off. Still, while she's recovering, Spiro strikes twice with Drill Peck in return, knocking out Milotic and earning us our third Kanto Gym Badge. Considering the strength of her team, this wound up being a pretty easy win. That said, Darkrai swept my entire team the first time around, so I was kind of prepared for this run. Okay, that's a good start to the Kanto half of our journey, but these were some tough battles, especially Sabrina. We've still got a lot of first stage Pokemon to draw and a whole lot of fully evolved Pokemon to battle, so we're a long way from done. Next time, we're going to be continuing on with the Kanto Gym, starting with Erika. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>